Shut up and sit down. Hi there guys, Andy here from Big Mac's Workshop Paint Studio and it's the first tutorial back from the holiday break and we're painting a Skull Cannon of Corn. Now uh, this is a really cool figure, loaded of detail. Uh, never had the opportunity to paint one before so I really uh, was looking forward to getting, it, uh, getting my mitts on this one. As you can see there's loads of uh, weird little features, skulls everywhere of course because it's Corn 8 uh, but it also looks got like kind of weird looking mouths and things and uh, lots of nice little uh, features there. So we're going to largely use uh, Scale 75's painting um, paints on this one, uh, but you can get a, um, similar uh, effects from using uh, GW paint as well. So we're starting off with Tinloss Red by Scale 75, and we get a nice coverage all over all the armor plating, just to uh, block in some uh, color there. Onto the uh, skin, because um, it looks like uh, there's got some kind of weird face feature on the inside of the cannon, which I never noticed before. Um, that is Bugman's Glow, and uh, I do like Bugman's Glow, it's a really nice go to colour for um, flesh. So, uh, back onto the armour now, and we're going to start mixing in some uh, highlights. And I've just started, added some uh, Mayhem Red into the Tin Loss, and as you can see, we're just uh, lightly painting it over and that really thin paint and uh, just to add a bit of uh, life to the uh, dark colours. So uh, pretty much pure mayhem red as always I'm leaving some of the dark colour um, showing through uh, and obviously the paint, paint's really thinned down uh, so you can uh, so it's going to take two or three layers to get the uh, colour you uh, the colour you're after but it also means that you get a real nice smooth fi uh, finish. So now I've added some blood red into the may uh, mayhem. And as you can see, it's going to start brightening up now. I'm going to start leaving some of the uh, darker colour for um, uh, more prominently uh, towards the uh, lower uh, lower sections, uh, also towards any uh, inside any of the um, recesses as well. And this is uh, just going to start bringing the um, armour to life. Once we've got the uh, uh, the colour we're after, we're going to start blending the colours together uh, using Caraber Crimson by GW, and uh, it's going to um, mute any of the uh, transitions, uh, making it look a lot more um, a lot more natural. So this is Scale 75 Blood Red now. As you can see, I'm stippling it. Uh, this is going to add a little bit of texture to the uh, model, but it's also going to allow us to get some really interesting highlights. Uh, but it's just going to take a little bit longer than uh, normal but it's going to um, give you some uh, different uh, a different type of highlight onto the um, armour leaving it kind of patchy but, um, but in an uh, interesting way So we're stippling now with Mephiston Red and uh, we're just doing exactly the same as before with the uh, stippling technique um, focusing towards the centre of the armour plates um, as you can see I'm just uh, muting it uh, somewhat where I've got a little bit heavy I'm just dabbing it a little bit off with my finger or you can use a Q-tip or whatever you've got to hand um, as you can see uh, I tend not to use actual stippling brushes, uh, I find them a little bit hard but you use whatever you've uh, whatever you've got available and whatever you feel comfortable with. So this is now Evil Suns, uh, again stippling but uh, start uh, again focusing towards the centre of the armour panels now, also towards the edges, really getting them uh, highlights uh, nice and vibrant uh, and really making the most of this uh, different technique to make it look a lot more interesting. So onto the armour trim, um, which being a KS model there's always a lot of, and uh, this is Warp Warp Bronze, uh, getting a nice even coverage of uh, of uh, all of the trim work. And I like Warp Warp Bronze, it gives you a nice uh, deep rich colour, uh, I, I find it's uh, really good for um, any kind of trim work as a nice baseline. Uh, the wheels and uh, some of the uh, other sections are based in gunmetal. Uh, this is by um, 
the layer <laughs> bear with me there I had to take a moment and uh, it's a nice dark colour but it's not as dark as the uh, black metal you could use um, I think it's Iron Breaker by GW to get a similar, similar sort of colour uh, just take a, uh, a moment to add uh, a little bit of water in there just to thin it down and take a couple of layers so onto uh, the trim again and uh, we're highlighting it with uh, Balthazar Gold by GW uh, it's a real nice colour actually as you can see I'm uh, not going all the way down to the lower sections of the uh, trim work uh, wanting to leave some of the water, got, um, water bronze uh, showing through uh, on the uh, lower sections this is just to uh, add the um, Add a nice transition to the uh, to the trim work and make it look a little bit more interesting. Obviously, you've got to be careful to uh, not uh, go onto the armor too much. Well, this is very easily rectified. So now I'm using a Drakenoff Nightshade uh, wash onto the uh, gold. It's going to make it look a lot more bronze, um, a lot deeper. Uh, it's going to give it a bit more of a, an interesting tone to it. And uh, obviously, as always, we'll thin the uh, wash down with uh, some thinners uh, just to make it uh, flow a little bit more, um, a little bit more consistently. And back onto the uh, the trim and the engine sections, I suppose. And it's Rune Lord Brass by GW. And as you can see, with uh, the Rune Lord and the Balf uh, the Dragon of Nightshade is really going to make it look an uh, interesting colour just to uh, give you that real nice um, bronze uh, look to it. And this is now a Psychorax bronze um, mixed with a little bit of fresh metal. And what we're doing now is uh, just finishing off these highlights. I'm going to do uh, another layer uh, with the uh, fresh metal in there as well and we're deliberately leaving some of the sections unhighlighted as this uh, just adds to the effect. So now with the fresh metal, uh, really focusing on the um, extremes, um, any of the, uh, 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 all along the edges, any of the little details that it's got um, engraved and, and we're also using a kind of a feathering technique um, brushing from the outside edge inwards uh, making the uh, most of any of the detail doing any kind of silver work without using Norn Oil so here we are I thin down Norn Oil all over any of them, um, the, the silver metals uh, obviously Norn Oil does its job uh, I'm not going to go too much into it just make sure to thin it a little bit so it flows a little bit better and uh, that way you'll get a much more even uh, coverage of an oil, oil and it'll uh, move towards the recesses much um, much more uh, easily I think that's the correct term I'm not gonna uh, <laughs> go on about it too much though yeah I'm sure you know what I'm getting at so now we're going back onto the flesh it's had a bit of a um, uh, wash with uh, a mix of Agrax Earth Shade and um, uh, the flesh shade and back onto the uh, with Bug Buns Glow I'm going to start picking out the flesh details really making it pop um, being careful to leave some of the uh, wash visible although not um, too starkly now I've added some Cadian flesh into the uh, mixture now it's making it much more pink and much more uh, uh, flesh like now and what we're doing is uh, much the same thing we're going to leave some of the uh, darker colors through, uh, uh, visible um, but really start to bring that flesh up to a nice pinky color we want it to look um, quite vibrant and sore uh, this is a, a kind of a an interesting concept on uh, of, a, of a cannon we really want to make it look really alive so um, what we're doing now is uh, highlighting up with uh, pure Cadian flesh now as always thin down a little bit so you get a uh, much better uh, coverage uh, without uh, the paint being too thick and uh, just starting to bring some um, more pinky colours into it and make it much more um, visible, much more 
Uh, it'll allow it to stand out nicely against the red armor. So now we're using Ungo Flesh. Um, not a core I've used a lot, uh, but it does work really well um, with the GW um, Flesh colors. Uh, it's quite a nice highlight. And uh, we're starting to focus on any of the um, leading areas now. Um, now there's a lot of inlets, uh, insets and such in this uh, on this, so just take your time to make sure you get the uh, the positioning right on the um, on, on the highlights. So now I've added some flayed one flesh into it, and we're just doing exactly the same thing. Uh, this is, again not a colour I've used a hell of a lot. I do apologise about the uh, awkward camera angle here. I'm trying to get the best uh, view for you as possible while still attempting to um, paint it as well, so I do apologise but as you can see the uh, flayed, the flayed one flesh really just brightens up that colour without taking it away from the, uh, the natural sort of flesh colour of the model that's pretty much pure flayed, flayed one now and I'm just uh, using this as a final highlight on the um, on, on the skin tones um, as you can see, there's loads of skulls in there now. You, what you can, or uh, well, much more visible uh, once the uh, flesh has been painted up. But as always, we're not going to leave the flesh uh, just pink. Uh, this is some kind of weird demon monster thing, so it needs to look a lot more interesting. So. A little bit more of a highlight with the flayed one. As you can see, it's just to uh, bring it up a little bit and uh, finally um, le leaving the uh, the most. We're just focusing towards the most extreme highlights now, where uh, the light would most likely hit first. So what I've done now is I've uh, got some Aphonian camo shade and. Um, and Caribou Crimson and also some Drafted Off Nightshade and I'm going to start um, painting in the um, these greens and blues and reds um, all around the um, muscle texture and uh, any of the stretched areas we're going to start bringing the uh, colours together uh, starting off with the Aphonian Camo Shade um, it's going to make it look and it's going to make it look a lot more bruised, a lot more sore um, a bit stretched and definitely kind of a painful sort of uh, colour. Now we're not going for uh, rotting, um, that's a, a Nurgle thing, which is why we're using the reds and the blues as well, because we um, that'll add a bit more life to it. So the red again we're using to uh, neutralise some of the uh, green from the Aphonian camera shade, but it's sort of Try to balance and actually want to get some of the red showing through, you want to leave some of the green showing through. It really just um, take a little bit of um, faffing about going up and down, up and down throughout the colours um, occasionally uh, adding some uh, highlights in just to tidy things up so what we're doing now is just uh, adding that flayed one flesh again and uh, mixed with a little bit of uh, un um, ungo and we're just um, tidying things up where uh, any of the uh, uh, washes are a little bit strong um, adding another highlight in so we're just uh, blend the colours a little bit and you're going to get a really nice uh, looking um, set of flesh colours on the inside so now I'm using uh, Khaki by uh, Vallejo, it's from a game colour range uh, as the base for the skulls and uh, this is so it's quite a, a yellowy colour so um, initially will blend in uh, with the skin but once we've uh, added some highlights it really does add uh, a lot of uh, depth to it so as you can see I've done the same on all the, uh, any of the other bone work or what I've decided is going to be bone and what we're going to do now is add an Agrax Earth shade all over the uh, bone and it's going to add some depth, it's going to colour it nicely as well so it's going to take on a much more bone colour uh, and it also is going to bring out any other details, like on this uh, back plate, this foot plate, it's got a lot of um, interesting details all over it. The horns is really nicely uh, sculpted. So 
So now I'm using Scale 75's Far Brown. Uh, this is going to be for first highlight, and it's just going to also be used and um, kind of uh, to uh, tidy everything up as well. And what's uh, happening now is uh, using such a thin, using a thin paint, we can almost glaze it, uh, sort of blended highlights with it. Um, this is just going to uh, add some real nice uh, transitions to it. Once the far brown's gone down, we're uh, now using um, Abdul Abdul Birch, uh, which is the next step up on, from the scale 75 range. And this is going to uh, be doing much the same thing uh, as you'd expect. All the teeth, all the uh, skulls, um, bring them all up to life. It's going to really make them. Se it's going to separate them from the uh, any of the skin work. And it's going to start really bringing these um, colours up nicely. And once we've got that down, moving on to uh, Mojave White. And this is just going to uh, finish off those highlights. Um, add a bit of a weird lump of paint there, and just. Uh, being mindful to um, take the uh, um, lumps off. Uh, this, this sometimes happens with any paints, so just uh, be careful to uh, notice it. And as you can see, just um, gently highlighting those colours up, making it look a lot more um, vibrant. And uh, then finally touching up with a little bit of um, off-white or, uh, or, or an ivory any of that and just to add a little bit of um, colour to the uh, final points and this is just going to just finish off those and there you have it um, once I'd, uh, I'd have the opportunity to once it's all finished up I uh, took the opportunity to do the oil wash this is going to add extra detail into the model and um, really uh, bring out any of the uh, colours what are already in there now as always um, massive thank you guys to uh, watching this I uh, really hope you enjoy this and took something away. Um, and so, as always, huge thank yous to you guys for watching this. And uh, please, if you want to see anything more, uh, any more of this sort of video, uh, hit like and subscribe, share with your friends, and all that good stuff. So, huge thank yous go out to our Patreons. Um, they're the guys who uh, help keep the lights on and um, really do add a lot to the, um, add a lot to the studio. Uh, so thank you guys, huge thanks to your boys Matt, Ludwig Hoffbauer, d -Wack, Mark, Dave, Tom uh, and White Metal Games. So huge thank you to you, we couldn't do this without you, you really do help a lot. If you're interested in joining us on Patreon, check out the links in the description um, where you get uh, early access to our videos on guaranteed un entry to our competitions. Also massive thanks to the Outpost and Element Games, uh, there are affiliate links. Um, your standard uh, 15 to 20 percent off uh, your um, GW and hobby purchases. Uh, check out the links in the description. Um, they're really good guys, uh, really helpful. So um, again, if you uh, want to do any orders, use our uh, affiliate links. It gives us a five percent cutback for absolutely no cost to you guys. Uh, so just uh, it really does help us get um, extra hobby stuff for you guys to enjoy. Anyway guys, thank, that's enough of me waffling, so thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.